Well, one very particularly annoying thing for patients is when an eyelash turns the wrong direction. And in this case, you see a very common example of how that eyelash can just rub on the conjunctiva or even along the cornea in some cases. Constantly also called trichiasis, which is a misdirected lash. And you can see it still starts in the lid at a normal spot, but then it suddenly decides to take a wrong turn. So a pretty routine, typical thing most of us are accustomed to doing is epilating the lash with jeweler's forceps. We're commonly instructed to grab at the base of the lash and pull it out and get as much of that lash out as you can. These are just typical routine lash epilations. And it comes out very, very nicely, but one challenge is that those lashes will regrow. After about a month or two, we'll see the regrowth of those lashes and can be right back in the exam chair doing it all over again. And the two comments that I wanted to make, thank you for saying jewelers. I think they're better for epilation than the epilation forceps because they're more precise and grabbing it at the base. It's also important that the jewelers close well. Some jewelers will have a, the tips don't align and then you might snip off the lash and then have a very short lash that can be more annoying because now it's stiff and sharp and they irritate a lot. So a better way or a different way perhaps for some patients with recurrent trichiasis is going to be electrolysis. And that's what we're going to review in this short video here. First off, observing the patient's eyelid. You can appreciate at least two prominent lashes. Even I see a third lash that looks like it's curving in the wrong direction. Yeah, here's some, here's some. And the thicker the lash, the more annoying. And you can also tell this lash is totally completely going the wrong direction. Uh, the Electrosis has the advantage of being a permanent treatment if the follicle of the lash is treated. I use a myeloma gland probe, which has a much smaller diameter than the other Elman probe that you see, which is still very thin. But I can see this is bare, this is less fraction of a millimeter. I go around the lash to be able to follow. I cannot do this if the lash isn't there because I don't know which area to treat. And you mentioned the Elman probe. That, of course, is attached to the radio frequency unit. So you're creating almost what looks like a conduction system here with the metallic probe going into the lash follicle. And when it comes into contact with the larger Elman probe coming from the bottom right of our screen, that's where we're seeing that conduction happening and the changing of the actual hair follicle area. And again, you can appreciate the, th the difference in size between this one and that little tiny tip here. Once I have started to make a, a, a um, start along the lash, I can use it as a guide to follow with a slightly larger probe. Uh, also, this patient is anesthetized, so this is why this bruises on the eyelid because this is not a comfortable treatment. Still better than the other alternative, which would be cryo. Cryo tends to create a lot of scarring and deformity of the eyelid. This does not create any deformity, but usually has to be repeated several times. Here's an example of where the tip is not perfectly aligned, and I think in a little bit you see me straighten that out. And could we presume that this is going to be a perfectly permanent procedure where that lash will never grow again, or do we ever see regrowth from that area even after this procedure? I have seen regrowth and I have had to retreat patients, but once it's done permanently and done well, it tends to not come back. Treatment with a larger probe along the shaft, trying to get the hair follicle. And as I pull it out in a moment, you will see that the follicle itself is removed as well. So at the very end of the lash, you will serve a mildly thicker portion, a little bit elevated, almost like a little sack or bag at the end. And that is the follicle. Ideally, you saw that coming out, um, the lash should provide no resistance on pulling out. So there's not much pulling at all, I just a little traction, and here is that follicle that I mentioned. And we're going to see the one more instant replay of that same thing, because I think that's a very important distinction from typical trichiasis, plucking with the, the jeweler's forceps without electrolysis. This one, you saw that little clump of the actual hair follicle coming out. Right. But there were those other two little one or two pesky lashes that needed a little work as well here. So those were tackled next after the big large one was already removed and same procedure, putting down the very small little probe into the hair follicle and applying the radio frequency Elman units to that surface as well. And it's a little tricky to do this at this little time because I have one probe in one hand. The other probe in the left hand, as you can see, I touch them and then I use a foot pedal to actually apply the current because I don't want to wave the probe around while current is already being applied. So the slit lamp is usually sadly controlled with my head while I'm working with almost all impedages I have. And this is just getting to the end of the case, trying to pluck out that last little pesky lash and it's coming out little by little there. But this is a nice procedure to consider, electrolysis for patients with recurrent trichiasis where epilation is a temporary solution and yet those lashes just continue to grow back again and again. And here's a comment, I straightened out the tips and now it's a much better functioning forceps.